Hey everybody, welcome to our video on the Microsoft Access Tab Control. A tab control can be a great way to deal with the need to store or display lots of data elements on a form. For example, I have several databases in the field that are medical related and the customers are storing hundreds and hundreds, upwards of 300 data elements for an evaluation. And to store that much data and display that much data, of course I have that data spread across multiple tables and then I have a one-to-one -one relationship between these tables. And then displayed on the forms, we have tab controls, and each tab has a subform on it displaying data from one of the tables. So we have a uh, you know tab one subform here, you know, tab two here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one of the things you'll see suggested on the web is that at design time, you bind a subform on tab one, and then you bind a second subform on tab two. And on tab three, you have another subform. And I started out that way. And what I found was as my database grew and the row count got higher and higher, that the load time for this form, in other words, you click it and open it, it was taking longer and longer to load. Reason being, of course, you've got I've got eight tabs here. So you've got eight subforms all running through their events and eight subforms querying your data source, all these queries running at the same time. And yeah, after a while, it began to really slow down. And I've seen one example on the web that is uh, very similar to what I'm about to suggest. And that was, they were suggesting that you have an unbound subform container on each tab. So tab one would have a, an unbound subform container and tab two would have a different subform container. All of them unbound at design time. And then based on which tab you clicked, you would bind or set the source object of the correct subform to the subform you want to display. And that's great, it works, it speeds up the loading of the form just fine. And I think that's a great idea as long as, as you move from one tab to another, you then destroy or remove that binding as you move from one to the next. In other words, I would suggest, for the sake of memory footprint, when you go from tab one to tab two, that you then unbind tab one. Save your data and unbind it, instead of leaving it bound. However, I want to suggest a, another possibility, and that is, by the very nature of the tab control, you can only show one tab at a time, right? If you only see one subform at a time, why would we need, on this form, eight subform controls? I think we can get away with just one, and this is exactly what I've been doing for uh, multiple years on several large databases of mine. So let's take a look at what I mean by that in design view. Let me resize this so we can see it. I'm going to really move things around here so we can see what I'm talking about. Let's get this tab control selected and then opened up. So normally what we would see suggested was you would be to click on the first tab and then put a subform container on here this surface and click on this tab and then put a, a different subform container and maybe a subform on this surface. What I'm suggesting though is we take our tab control and we squish it up here Make it as small as we can. Pull it down off the top. And then we have a subform container, okay, not on the tab control itself, but on the main form. And I'm going to squish it way up here, right against our subform, and get it lined up so it looks real nice. Let me resize my form again. There we go. And I'm suggesting that all we need is this one subform container. And then based on which tab we select, we can change the subform that we display in this one subform container. Let's take a look at our tab control. Notice that each tab here has a caption that displays around here in the tab, and it has a name that we can use in our code. We won't be using that name, however. What we'll be using today is the page index. And it's a zero based index, so you see the first tab, the page index is equal to zero, the second is equal to first, the third is equal to two, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's click on our tab control. We are going to use down here the on change event to work with the subforms. Take a look at our code. A very simple code, not much to it at all. Here's our tab control change event. Inside here, I have a select case, and we are testing the value of the tab control itself. The value 
of the tab control holds the page index, whatever page index you're currently on. So all we do here is test the page index, and based on which selection we have, we set that subform container's source object to whatever subform we want to display on that tab. This is very simple code, not much to this at all. Okay. The only other code I have here is code on the form load event, and that is to set up the first subform to display when the form is first loaded. Okay, so right here I'm setting the tab control value to the first tab just to make sure that when you load the form up for the first time, it's on the first tab. And I found that the default position for it to start in is the first. So if you do this, the on change doesn't fire. So I'm going to tell it to fire that this event to bind the subform to it. And that's it for the code. Let's come back over here to the database side. Notice I have subforms over here. Let's take a look at one of these, for instance. I have eight different subforms, one for each tab. And I don't have any controls on these. I'm just being really simple right now. But I have a label at the top of each one to make sure that we can tell which one belongs to what subform. Tab one on this one, tab two, tab three, etc. So in form view, we click on a tab, we test the page index of the tab, and then we bind the correct form to it. And that's all there is to it. So I think the code we have here is very simple. I hope you found this video useful. As usual, I'll have a link to the code listing in the description down below. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.